It's easy when you're going through something to pack your bags and go to your mama's house. <laughs> Turn to somebody and say, unpack your bags and get ready to it's easy, it's easy to start crying how bad it is, but God says, I want to show you how great I am. I want to show you how, how bad I am. It doesn't matter how much you're surrounded with all the negative things around you, I still got more for you than what that is against you in Jesus' name. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot. Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. Subscribe to us on YouTube and see the latest videos from Drs. Philip and Brenda Godot. It's easy. I am the God of more than enough. I am a El Shaddai God. I'll bring you back and then I'll lift you up. Just log on to YouTube and type in Philip Godot Ministries and then just click subscribe. The video messages are right there on your screen. And if you're out and about, we also have a smartphone app so you can catch the Godots on the go. The app is easy to find. Just search Calvary Christian Center for both Android and iPhone users. Stay informed, stay connected, and stay encouraged on YouTube and with our amazing app. And, and since God is for us, come on, and since God is for us, come on, and since God is for us, who in the world can be against us? Though the enemy comes in like a flood, God says, I'll raise up a standard against him. He will not prevail against you in Jesus' name. And now, our A Father's Heart broadcast. Man, I'm telling you, I'm mad at the devil. I'm mad at, at everything that he's doing in society. I'm mad at what he's doing in your marriages and mad at what he's doing in your families, in your finances, in your health, in all the other areas he's been attacking you. I'm mad at it. But see, I can't help you if you don't start believing this word. And you got Brenda and I as an example. We're not no little fly by nights. Maybe we're very mature Christians. We've been in this a long time and we're living it for you so That's you right. can also grab a hold of it. That's, right. That's why Brenda was talking about our children. See, if you, y'all got me hollering at y'all. <laughs> see, see, you got to understand that, that, that if the parents have no hope, have no expectation. They can't pass it on to the children. So the, he attacks the parent. We're the parents of this congregation. This is mom, I mean mom. And, and. I ain't confused, don't worry about it. This is mom and dad. But if he can attack us and make us lose our hope, then he can cause you. We can't teach it to you. With conviction and with passion, if we don't have it ourselves. That's what's happening with our kids today. They, they in homes where there's no expectation. There's nothing but whining and complaining and griping and, and, and talking about all the little negative things. All they can talk about is how bad this is. And so I got to say to you, shut up. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that, huh? Ephesians, the second chapter, look at me in Ephesians 2 and verse what, 12? Yes. Ephesians 2 and 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, look what it says here in Ephesians 2 and 12. It says, And that the time ye were without Christ, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of what? Promise. Of promise, having what? No. no hope and without God in the world. Wow. Somebody say, wow. wow. Look, I'm going to read it one more time. That at that time... Ye were without who? Christ. Somebody raise your hand and say, thank God them days is over with. Thank God no, I used to be without him, but I ain't without him no more. Amen. But I was without him, but them days is over with. I will never be without him again. Amen. Being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. In other words, God says, I had more for you. 
but because of your being alienated, because you were without Christ, I couldn't even do with for you that I wanted to. And what's worse than, than not having Christ in your life is to have Christ in your life and have no expectations. And have no dreams, no visions for the future. Look what it says here. And then it says, and having no hope and without God in the world. Wow. Having no expectations. See, the enemy wants to continually do all he can to rob you of everything he can to keep you from moving your life forward. Yeah. Right. Yep. So you want to use your time, as uh, Pastor was talking about, all the, the, the TV programs, the different music and the different things. There's, there's good music. There's good programming that you can get a hold of. But you need to be building up your, your life. You need to be building on good things, you know, and, and building up the hope. There's promises in all throughout the word of God that you need to build yourself up on, that you will know that these are promises. There was a time that it says that at that time yeah. you were without Christ. You are with Christ now. Now you need to know all the promises that he has made to you, and you need to grab a hold of his word and his, his promises and his, the good programs, the good music, the things that are going to build you up because you are, with, you are not without hope. You have hope. You have everything you need, but you have to build yourself up. Thank God that we're here. We're mm. here with you this morning. Yeah. But you got to take hope home with you. You got to take expectation home with you. You got to right. take faith with you. And and there are uh, so you know there if you just feed yourself on it because the world is just full of it. When we were coming up, some of the things you just did not see on television. Right. Daytime, nighttime, no time. You didn't see certain things, but it's, it's, it's there. So you got to know, you got to be strong enough in yourself to say, this is not for me. I'm working on something. I'm working on building myself up. Yes, nobody's there. Pastor's not there. Mama's not there. Daddy's not there. Nobody's there but God and you. And you got to make some good decisions on what you are feeding yourself as we're getting through. This is a whole different world that we're living in right now. And the hope, God has not changed, but we got to stay with him. If you get away from him, you're going to be on your own. And the enemy is trying his best to sift you and to take away your expectation and your hope. But you can have it, and the promises are yours, and you're going to receive it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I, I'm, when we started the church, you know, I, I, I said, God, now, you know, um, I know you call the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, but you didn't really stepped over the line when you called me. Now, I know y'all think that I really got it together, but I really did not have it. I'm, I'm a little more polished now, you know, but, but, but when, he, when he called me, I said, oh, my God, look what God is. You didn't, you didn't call me. I'm, you didn't messed up big time, God. Then I said, then secondly, I'm going to preach only the Bible, not denominationalism, not religion. I'm just going to teach the Bible, just line up on line, precept on precept. I'm just going to teach the word. I ain't going to get into all these other things out there. And, 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 and then when I said, now, Lord, if you don't do what your word says, you're going to look real bad because I'm going to tell everybody you didn't do what the word says. If your word says it, I'm going to believe what your word says. Come on, y'all. Anybody with me? So, so Brenda and I, uh, we, we, lived in, we used to live in real Linda, California. Everybody, everybody heard of real Linda, California? You know, Rush, Rush Limbaugh likes to talk about real Linda real bad. But we lived in real Linda, California, and uh, I was happy there. Uh, and then we got a notice in the mail or a phone call that the bank was calling the note on our house. And uh, we had made all of our payments. It wasn't that we were behind in any payment. It was just that the bank, they, they kept, they, I mean, they must have had 10 banks that kept selling the notes. Selling the notes, selling the notes, selling the notes. And then they came to this one bank and they said, well, we don't like this wraparound. They had put a wraparound for us to buy the house. We've been in the house about 10 years. And then they wanted to do a wraparound. They said that, so this new bank didn't like the wraparound. And they said, we're calling the note. And, and, and we had no money to try to pay the, the, that mortgage off on that area. So I cried out to God, I said, God, now, I, I, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to stay in faith. I, I ain't going to cry about it. I ain't going to whine about it. I ain't going to let nobody even know about it. 
And then what few people, some of my staff people knew about him, and then they were saying, well, you need to talk to the church. You know, the, the church should help you. You're a pastor. You know, they should help you to take care of your living. I said, no. I said, God's going to do this. God don't do it. I'm going to tell on him. I'm going to tell on him. I said, because I'm a child of God. I said, not beside that. I'm a man of God. I'm teaching the word. I'm living right. I'm treating Brenda right when she even don't cook my meals. I'm treat, still treating her right. <laughs> or when she burns the food up, I still treat her right. And she calls it oh, food, food for, the, for gods. the gods and all that, you know. I said, I ain't, I ain't going to trip. I said, God, I'm going to go to the banks. I'm going to go out there, and you're going to have to make a way for it to happen. Every bank I went to, I don't know how many banks, I went to a lot of them. Every bank, bank turned me down. Every bank. I think we were like in the 11th hour in the 59th minute when it was all over with. It was in the newspaper. Pastor Godot's house is in foreclosure. And all of a sudden at the 11th hour, 59th, every bank had turned me down. And, and I said, God, I'm just reminding you, I'm a child of you. I'm doing what you're supposed to. I know this is an attack against me. You got to come through. I, I, I just, some things I'm going to talk to God about when I, when I get, go to heaven. No time soon, though. But when I do go, I'm going to say, God, why do you always seem to be so late sometimes? Why are you going to drag the blessing out? If you're going to do it, just go on and do it. Don't drag us out. Does anybody feel me right now? I know that's not a good word to say feel. Do you feel me right now? And I said, God, I said, uh, uh, and here at the 50, 11th hour and 59th minute, a man calls me up, a businessman in the city calls me up, wealthy businessman, and he comes and he calls me up and said, I heard that your house is in foreclosure, Pastor Godot. He says, I felt that the Lord wants me to help take care of it. And I said, that's what I said, wow. And you know, a little bit right after he called me, the bank called me and said, we understand that he's going to help you, and so we want to, we, we'll match whatever he does. But it was the 11th hour and the 59 minute. See, my wife had already told me earlier, she said, uh, Phil, she said, I don't want to lose my house. You know, she didn't put some pressure on the brother now. I mean... <laughs> I don't know, what do you want to go out? What would you want me to do? I, I, I'm trying to do everything I can. It ain't work. Then I said, I don't want to lose my, I just want this house and I want it in my name. Now it's the 11th hour and the 59th minute. Then I get that call. I said, thank you, Lord. And, 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 and what was looked like it was going to be a shame, but it was drug out. But God came through for me then. See, I have no doubt that God will come through for you. I said, I have no doubt that he'll come through for you. But see, you got to believe. Are you waiting for God to answer your prayers? So what does expectation do? It changes what I'm saying. I'm starting to expect and believe. If I believe it and I'm expecting it, then I'm going to say it. In Dr. Godot's message, Expecting Kingdom Manifestations, you'll learn that in order to receive from God, you must have a spirit and attitude of expectation. Because you already know that He loves you and He cares about you and He has a good plan for you. If you don't believe it, Come on. that's why we're teaching you so you can get faith in the Word of that's God. That's it, that's it. Well, actually, what I got out of it was confirmation. Then to come here and to hear a pastor, Sister Godot, speak about it, just open up the window to let me know that, hey, I'm on the right track. It was right on time. I'm grateful for the report because it was a good reminder. We are very excited and we are keeping our expectations high so God can bring the manifested word in our lives. That up. All you see is misery. If all you see is sickness and disease, if all you see is yourself being single, if all you see is marriage your problem, God can't change your life until he changes what you're seeing. Follow those that believe, and that is his pleasure. Yes. It's your father's pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom. God wants to fulfill your greatest desires, but you must expect that he will first. Expectation brings manifestation. Order your copy today. Remember the last time you jumped into your car, excited to go somewhere? You turned the key, and the battery was dead. Well, a lot of people's lives are like that car, going nowhere. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God, and faith only comes by hearing. I'm Pastor Phil, and I want to invite you to join us every Sunday morning at Calvary Christian Center. 
Be sure to visit our website, calvarychristian.com. That's calvarychristian.com for more information. I can tell you stories all day how God has come through for Brenda and I and have manifested, but see, if he can strip you of your hope, if he can strip you of your believing, it won't happen for you. Look with me in, in, uh, in your Bible to the book of Genesis. Genesis, the 26th chapter of Genesis. Look at me in Genesis, the 26th chapter. Genesis 26. And um, Genesis is just before uh, the table of contents. After. Oh, after it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Okay. Now, now uh, look in Genesis 26 and verse 1. And it says, and, and, and now there was a famine in the land. There was a, what, what was in the land? And then it said, look what it says here. You need to put brackets around that. Besides the first famine, there was a famine in the land. Now, how many of y'all know that California is in a critical area for water right now? Yes, We're in, the, I think, the fourth or the fifth year of a drought. And now they're saying that we're now moved to extreme drought. They said the next thing after this year, if we don't get water this year in the fall and the winter, that we will go into a famine. So it's about four to five years that they didn't declare a famine. That means water, no water, everything dies. Everything dries up. It's bad. But I'm declaring it's going to rain. Oh, no, we're going to get a bumper crop of rain. It's going to rain this fall. It's going to rain this winter. It's going to rain in the spring. And, and then we're going to get some more the next fall and the next winter and the next spring. Come on, I want some faith in here. Amen. Amen. But here, here we don't know how many years that they had had this, this uh, that they had to, you know, they, uh, they, they call it, uh, the, when, they, when you go through a drought, they got different levels of drought until they get to the, or, or stages of drought, until it gets to, they call uh, uh, ex, extreme or exceptional drought. Well, that's what they said. We're at the highest level of a drought before you go into a famine. Here they were in a famine. Watch this here. I don't know how many years they have a famine, uh, but then when they went through the whatever years of the famine, it went into another famine. What the heck? Turn to somebody and say, what the heck? What? 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 Went from one dr famine to another famine. Worse, it got, if you, when you think it could get worse, the worst that you could think you could be in, it got even worse. But look what here, look what here, because there's a miracle. It's a miracle in your house today. I'm going to say it again. There's a miracle in your house today. There's something God's trying to get to you, and he's trying to get your faith stirred up right now. There's something happening right now on your behalf, and God's trying to get you back to dreaming again, get you back to believing again, get back to expecting again, so he can show up on your behalf. Yeah, yeah, look, look at here. Y'all remember, remember Elijah and, uh, and Gehazi? Come on, y'all remember Elijah and Gehazi? Remember, Elijah was uh, asleep. They were sleeping. They woke up in the morning. And Elijah said to Gehazi, go, go to Starbucks and get me some coffee. And, uh, and Elijah, Gehazi went to go to Starbucks to get some coffee and looked up there, and all of a sudden, the whole place that, that where they were around was surrounded with Syrian soldiers. Anybody remember the story? Surrounded with Syrian soldiers. And Gehazi ran back down there and woke up Elijah and said, Elijah, Elijah, come and look and see. And all he could see was the Syrian soldiers everywhere around him. And he said, he said, he made a statement. Hear me now. He said, there's more for us than is against us. Now, Lord, hear me now, because I'm praying this for you right now. Lord, open up his eyes that he can see what I'm talking about, because sometimes you're so caught up in what is in your past, or you're so caught up in what's in your future, that right in your present, God is trying to get you to open up your eyes so you'll quit talking about this, and you'll quit talking about that, and you'll start talking about what's in the head of you right now in Jesus' name. So he said, Lord, open up his eyes. 
Oh, y'all, come on. Oh, Lord, open up his eyes. Lord, open up your eyes. Open up your eyes that you can see the glory of God. See the goodness of God. His miracle work and power on your behalf. He said, open up his eyes that he can what? See. Then you'll quit talking about your present. And you'll quit talking about your past. And you'll talk about what God is going to do for you. And I'm telling you, God for you is greater than anything you can think about. So he said, open up his eyes. And when he opened up his eyes, he could see the whole sky full of angels with chariots of fire, ready to go to war, ready to go to combat, to be able to deliver them from the enemy that was coming against them. Hear me now, because the same God, I said the same God is on your side right now. No matter what you're dealing with, God is on your side to, to, to redeem you and to be able to vindicate you and to be able to deliver you out of whatever you're dealing with right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, excuse me right now, excuse me, but there is a turnaround anointing in your life right now. There's something that God is trying to do to turn around something on your behalf in the name of Jesus. I ain't going to cry about what's going on. I'm not going to whine about it. I'm just going to shout my way out of this situation. No, you're going through it. But listen to me. You're going through it. Yes, it's bad. But it, it ain't as bad as God is. I'm telling you, you serve a big God, a mighty God, a great God, a good God, and he's ready to show up on your behalf, but you got to expect him to show up. Look at here, 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 look at here. Genesis. Woo! In Genesis, the drought was there. Then it says in the second verse, he says, and the Lord told him not to go nowhere, but where I tell you to go. When you're going through some of the toughest times in your life, you got to get your ears tuned in to him. See, because everything else, there's many voices in the world. There's many sounds out there that's trying to get your attention, but God says, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Y'all listening to me? And then he said, and he said, now I want you, don't go to Egypt, because everybody who was in Canaan land was running to Egypt because that's where all the water and all the resources work. It's easy when you're going through something to pack your bags and go to your mama's house. <laughs> Turn to somebody and say, unpack your bags and get ready to. It's easy, it's easy to start crying how bad it is, but God says, I want to show you how great I am. I want to show you how, how bad I am. It doesn't matter how much you're surrounded with all the negative things around you, I still got more for you than what that is against you in Jesus' name. Yep. Now that you've heard the word, I know that you're ready to make a decision to receive Christ into your life. The greatest thing that you could ever do is to open a door to your heart and allow him to come in for the forgiveness of your sin and to experience intimate and personal relationship with him. Won't you do it right now? And I'm stretching my hands towards you. Won't you stretch your hands towards me and just say to say, Lord Jesus, I open a door to my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And thank you for forgiving me for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that you did that, that's all it takes. It ain't no, you don't have to have a big windstorm. You're just doing it by faith. And Christ is in your life. Your sins forgiven. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation and old things are passed away with. Welcome to the family. Write us, call us, email us, do something. We have a free book we'd like to give to you. Welcome to the family. Are you waiting for God to answer your prayers? In Dr. Godot's message, Expecting Kingdom Manifestations, you'll learn that in order to receive from God, you must have a spirit and attitude of expectation. Everything 
that is in the Bible, if it's in the Bible, it's in the Word, and it has anything to do with the covenant or my rights or privilege, I'm expecting, come on, kingdom manifestation. As you stand on God's Word, you should always expect He will fulfill His promises in your life. God wants to fulfill your greatest desires, but you must expect that He will first. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit complaining and griping about what hasn't happened. Won't you just let the past be past? Expectation brings manifestation. Order your copy today. Won't you start believing for something big to happen for you? Losing a loved one or friend can cause overwhelming grief. Any type of loss can be devastating. Calvary Christian Center is now kicking off our Grief Share Ministry for people experiencing loss or wanting to help. It can be life-changing. For more information, please go to the Grief Share table in the foyer after service. Get the support you deserve. It's a Family Affair returns to Calvary. Midweek service starts at 6.30 p.m. and ends at 8. It's a family-friendly Bible study. Don't forget to invite your family and friends. What do you appreciate the most about Pastor? I've been here for 17 years, and each year he has kept that promise alive. He's an awesome man of God, and I'm so blessed to have him in my life. His consistency, his character, his integrity, and his steadfastness. When a problem is presented to him, he gets right to the root of it. His intelligence level, his leadership qualities are second to none. The words that he gives is just what I need to hear. A faithful man, uh, a mentor, a father. The amount of people that he comes into contact with, he, it just doesn't grow weary with him. He just loves everyone. And we appreciate it, Pastor. We love you. People really appreciate it as well. Recently, our youth ministry served the city's homeless at Calvary Christian Center's Safe Haven Ministry in Sacramento. It makes me feel good knowing that I can give back and I can offer something, even though it's not monetary. I show them that we care and that we are here. We are here to help. It's us serving God in a different way, so I think it's very important. It's appreciated by those in need. Oh man, it's a blessing. I mean, it it helps us out. You know, I mean, if it wasn't for places like this, I mean, we'd we wouldn't have, have nothing. I think they're a gift from God. Absolutely. And it's the best place to go. Hey everybody, we still got more hygiene bags inside if you guys want to come get some. Calvary, this is your tithes and offerings in action. Um, they worked hard to raise the money to get all this stuff. We did uh, several fundraisers. Um, we did bake sales and people getting donations and everything in. Just hoping that the kids see that they're being used to be a blessing. This has been a Philip Godot Ministries broadcast.